Hello, my name is John, and today we're in the cockpit of the M8 once more. A user on the ED forums asked me to do this video on how to perform takeoffs and hovering in the M8 because he was struggling with it. So let's get started. In any helicopter like the M8, there are four different ways you can take off. The first way is a vertical takeoff with acceleration outside of ground effect. The second way to take off is also vertical, however with acceleration inside ground effect. The third way is a running takeoff and the fourth way, which is kind of special for the M8, is a running takeoff on the nose wheel. Those takeoffs are ordered by weight. You can take off vertically outside of ground effect only if you're very light and if you're very heavy you have to perform a running takeoff or a running takeoff on the nose wheel. So let's look at those four ways in a bit more detail. The first takeoff I wanted to show you is the vertical takeoff with acceleration outside of ground effect. For this takeoff you have to keep in mind that your maximum weight is less than 11,100 kilograms. However, also important is the density altitude as well as the outside air temperature and wind speed that are currently affecting your helicopter. There are charts available that read out what wind speed and what outside temperature and what altitude allows you to take the helicopter off in a vertical takeoff with acceleration outside of ground effect. However, the easiest way to figure that out without any manuals or any other books you have to reference is by performing a hover check. In the hover check, you just take the helicopter into a hover, as the name suggests, and you have to reach a certain altitude above ground. And if you are able to reach that altitude, you're cleared for that takeoff method. For the vertical takeoff with acceleration outside of ground effect, we have to reach a hover altitude of 10 meters. So let's try that. We bring up the power. Oh, sorry, let me enable the controls indicator because that was requested as well. Uh, let me bring up the power, pull back on the stick a bit to the right, compensate for the rudder or for the turning and just bring in more power and there we go, we're hovering. Moving a bit, but yeah, currently our radar altitude is 5 meters, so if we'll add more power, with also keeping the engine power indicator in our eyes, we can reach 10 meters above ground level. This is due to our late weight and the low temperature outside. And however, as we reach 10 meters above ground, this means the vertical takeoff with acceleration outside of ground effect is possible. So let's continue and perform that. I will just bring in a bit more power, tip the nose forward, and there we go. We're accelerating, we're not descending anymore. And this is, for example, interesting if we want to take off from a confined area over an obstacle. And there we go, we're accelerating, speed is 100 kilometers. Now let's bring up the nose a bit so we can gain some altitude. Always remember, speed is life and altitude is life insurance. And there we go. We have taken off, performing a vertical takeoff and accelerating outside of ground effect. Now let's go to the next takeoff method. For our second takeoff, we are a bit heavier than before. We have loaded a couple of soldiers and we can now no longer do the vertical takeoff with acceleration outside of ground effect. So we ha will have to do a vertical takeoff with acceleration inside ground effect. For this method of taking off, we have to reach an altitude of about 3 to 4 meters during the hover check. So let's do that right now. As usual, bring back the cyclic a bit to the right, the right and back. Increase in collective a bit until the helicopter starts to get a bit lighter on its wheels. And once it starts to move a bit, we will correct using the rudder and the cyclic while increasing the collective constantly. There we go. We're off to ground, trying to keep the position as good as possible. Now currently we're about a meter above ground. We want, a bit, we want to get a bit higher because we need three to four meters. So we'll increase collective a bit more. And we have about three meters now. Let's do a bit more. And we should be, yeah, that's good. We're about four meters, maybe a bit more even. Uh, the engine power, as you can see on the indicator on the bottom left, is still below the lowest limit, so that's good. And now to perform our takeoff sequence, we'll just put the nose forward by moving the cyclic forward, and we will not touch the collective anymore. And at about one meter above the runway, we will accelerate to 60 uh, kilometers per hour, 
And once we have reached that speed, we'll just ease a bit back on the cyclic, as we do right now, so we can accelerate and climb at the same time. And once we have reached about 120 km per hour, we will ease a bit more back, so we can climb at that speed. And yeah, this concludes the vertical takeoff with acceleration instead of ground effect. Uh, the you usually would use this method of taking off, obviously in helicopters with uh, no wheels, but only skids. And also in the MI-8, for example, if you're over grass or sand or maybe dirt, or if you have only limited space and you cannot do a rolling takeoff while you're quite heavy. And yeah, this concludes this me method of taking off. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the next one. Now this time the helicopter has been loaded to the absolute maximum of uh, 13,000 kilograms. And as we have enough space and it's quite hot outside, this time we want to perform a running takeoff. Now for the running takeoff, we also have to perform the hover check just to make sure that we can lift off at the end of the takeoff run. To do so, we will just do as previously. We'll pull the back the side click a bit to the right and back. And then we will increase collective slowly until we get light on the wheels. We'll keep an eye on the rotor RPM as well as the power indicator. And a bit more power is necessary as we're very heavy and it's quite hot outside. And there we go. We're off the ground. Drifting a bit due to the wind I guess. And just getting back in position. And now we have reached about a meter above ground and we're right inside the first limit, the takeoff limit which we can sustain for 5 minutes, so that's okay. However, we want to get back to the ground. As the hover check has been successful, but as it's a rolling takeoff, we will start it on the ground and not from the air. There we go. I set it back somewhere close to where we were before takeoff. Oh, there we go. And uh, now, the first thing we want to do is to release the brakes. We won't roll very well with the brakes on. Then we want to increase collective a bit push the nose forward and start accelerating. Rolling. We don't want to push the nose too far forward else we will start to perform a nose wheel takeoff and we don't want to do that right now. We want to accelerate. Nose will go a bit down but that's the way it is. We will go through transitional lift right here as it's vibrating very uh, star uh, strongly and we have reached about 60 knots or 60 kilometers per hour, sorry. Increase the collective a bit more have taken off the helicopter from the ground and we want to accelerate further close to the ground until we reach a safe altitude and a safe speed especially to climb to our safe altitude and there we go as you have seen the takeoff takes much more space than the vertical takeoffs did before however this takeoff is for heavier situations where you have enough space or if it's very hot and uh, this is possible because uh, the helicopter uses most of its power, or the highest power output, is during hover and maximum flight speed. However, during hover, as we had right before now, the helicopter would not have been able to lift itself without uh, overpowering or overloading the engines. And we don't obviously want to do that. And therefore we perform the rolling takeoff, which allows us to go away from the hover zone and get to a speed in which we can take off similar to an aircraft by just lifting up the nose and taking off like that. And now to our last takeoff method. And also for the last takeoff we're performing today, we have loaded the helicopter to the absolute maximum of 13,000 kg. And uh, the last takeoff is the running nose wheel takeoff, which is very similar to the running takeoff. However, it provides a shorter takeoff distance. First of all, as in the running takeoff, we want to perform a hover check to an altitude of 1 meter. So let's do so. Once more, we will bring back the side click to the back right and increase the collective until we get light on the wheels and then we correct until we lift off the ground. Oh, that was a bit much. There we go. We're off the ground and we're at about an, a meter above ground right now, which is enough for our running takeoff on the nose wheel and if you look at the power indicator we're reaching the first limit which is the takeoff limit for five minutes and we will not need so much power for five minutes so that is okay 
Now let's bring the helicopter back down on the runway. Right on the center line where we want it, hopefully. And after reusing throttle, let's quickly talk about what we will do. And first of all, we will keep the brakes on this time, as the main gear should not be touching the ground. We will increase the collective until the main gear starts to get off the ground. Then we will push over the nose by putting the cyclic about halfway forward. And once we start to accelerate forward, we want to keep doing so until we reach about 60 km per hour, at which point we will pull up the nose by pulling back on the cyclic and we will start to climb out. We want to accelerate to about 120 and after that we want to continue climbing. So that's all that in theory. Let's try it out in praxis. Let's increase the collective, compensate with the rudder, we'll increase collective until the, no uh, the rear gear comes up. Now we start to roll. We want to increase the collective further. We have about, oh we're way too fast now, but oh well. There we go. Uh, we kept it a bit long on the ground, but <laughs> this takeoff run is very fast. And we might not be at the maximum density altitude for that weight. So yeah, that was a very quick one. Uh, and, uh, we could have gotten off the ground a bit earlier. Uh, I was a bit slow on pulling back, but that's all right. Uh, we have reached a safe speed quite quickly in a short distance. So whenever you want to, or whenever you're too heavy to perform a vertical takeoff, and you want to take off at a very high weight or a high density altitude, you can perform a running nose wheel takeoff. Works sufficiently well on a somewhat even ground as well. Obviously the whole uh, takeoff uh, procedures are depending on the situation, on the task, on the environment. There's a lot of stuff to consider. It cannot be generalized all the way. Uh, for example, if you have a small combat zone and you have to take off over some trees, you sometimes cannot avoid the engines going to the maximum limit. Um, but uh, generally, if there is no uh, necessity, you should not uh, overpower your engines and uh, the guy sitting in the middle there will thank you for that. I hope you like this video. I hope it answers the questions that were there about takeoff in the MI8 and about hovering. And yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. And yeah, goodbye. Just fly safe.